Hi, seniors. This week, we are going to be looking at Malcolm X's final move in his career um, in the civil rights movement. And this is from 1964 from the New York Times. And it says, Malcolm X seeks UN Negro debate. He asks African states to cite U.S. overrights. So we are going to look at the newspaper article from 1964 that talks about, that discusses Malcolm X's move to turn the treatment of African Americans in the United States, move it from a civil rights issue within the United States to an international issue by bringing it to the UN and by invoking the help of African nations. So let's see how the New York Times wrote about this in 1964. The State Department and the Justice Department have begun to take an interest in Malcolm X's campaign to convince African states to raise the question of persecution of African, ne sorry, of American Negroes at the United Nations. Okay, so here it's the article is stating that Malcolm X is trying is asking for help from the African states to address the issue of persecution of American Negroes at the United Nations. So the persecution, the unfair treatment of American blacks in America. The black nationalist leader started his campaign July 17th in Cairo, where the 33 heads of independent African states held their second meeting since the Organization of African Unity was founded in Addis Ababa 14 months ago. This is... Okay. Before leaving for Cairo, Malcolm told friends in New York that it was his intention to add a new dimension to the civil rights struggle in the United States. This, he said, could be achieved by internationalizing the Negro question at the United Nations in the manner that South African apartheid was transferred into an international problem. Malcolm's eight-page memorandum to the heads of state at Cairo requesting their support became available here only recently, here meeting the United States. After studying it, officials said that if Malcolm succeeded in convincing just one African government to bring up the charge at the United Nations, the United States government would be faced with a touchy problem. The United States officials here believe would find itself in the same category as South Africa, Hungary, and other countries whose domestic politics have been debating issues at the United Nations. The issues, officials say, would be of service to critics of the United States, communist and non-communist, and contribute to the undermining of the position the United States has asserted for itself as the leader of West in the advocacy of human rights. In the letter from Cairo to a friend, Malcolm wrote, I have gotten several promises of support in bringing our plight before the UN this year. According to one diplomatic report, Malcolm had not met with success, but the report was not documented and officials here today conceded the possibility that Malcolm might have succeeded. So in this paragraph, it's saying that initially, or at first, the United States did not think that Malcolm X was successful in getting support from the African nations, but that maybe that information was wrong and that perhaps Malcolm X had succeeded in convincing at least one nation and the United States believed that if even one nation supported, one African nation supported this movement to bring the treatment of black Americans to the UN, that the United States would have a serious problem on their hands. 
Passages in Malcolm's memorandum indicated he had encountered resistance to his idea. Some African leaders at this conference, he said in his memorandum, have implied that they have enough problems here on the mother continent without adding the Afro-American problem. With all due respect to your esteemed positions, I must remind all of you that the Good Shepherd will leave 99 sheep at home to go to the aid of the one who is lost and has fallen into the hands of the imperialist wolf. We in America are your long lost brothers and sisters, and I am here to remind you that our problems are your problems. So that is one of your questions. What does he mean by this parable? Um, or this metaphor of the good shepherd will leave 99 sheeps at home to go to the aid of the one who is lost. Um, what is your opinion? What does that mean? The American government is either unable or unwilling to protect the lives and property of your 22 million African American brothers and sisters. We stand defenseless at the mercy of American racists who murder us at will for no reason other than we are black and of African descent. Our problem are your problems. We have lived for over 300 years in that American den of racist wolves in constant fear of losing life and limb. Malcolm also warned the heads of the African states that their countries would have no future unless the American Negro problem was solved. He said, your problems will never be fully solved until and unless ours are solved. You will never be fully respected until and unless we are also respected. You will never be recognized as free human beings until and unless we are also recognized and treated as human beings. As staring that the Negro problem is not one of civil rights, but of human rights, Malcolm said, if United States Supreme Court Justice Arthur Goldberg a few weeks ago could find legal grounds to threaten to bring Russia before the United Nations and charge her with violating the human rights of less than 3 million Russian Jews, what makes our African brothers hesitant to bring the United States government before the United Nations and charge her with violating the human rights of 22 million African Americans. Okay, in that paragraph, Malcolm X is making the argument that this Supreme Court justice, this judge named Arthur Goldberg, an American, brought to the United Nations charge against Russia for Russia's treatment of less than 3 million Jews in Russia. So Malcolm is making the argument that the African leaders have every right to similarly bring the case of the mistreatment of black Americans in the United States to the United States, to the UN, to the United Nations. We pray that our African brothers have not freed themselves of European colonialism only to be overcome and held in check by American dollarism. Don't let American racism be legalized by American dollarism. Here he's, in, he's saying don't be concerned with American trade, with American money that you might lose if you bring this to the United Nations, because what we're talking about is people's lives. And so you may feel threatened that the United States government will not trade or put taxes or embargoes on you if you, the African leaders, bring these charges. But it's a human rights issue and therefore should be attended to. Malcolm argued that if South African racism is not a domestic issue, then American racism also is not a domestic issue. Again, saying that the civil rights movement, it's not 
just a domestic meaning inside of the nation, but it is a world issue, which means it is a human rights issue, which means that it should go to the United Nations rather than to a country's government. The Black nationalist who quit the Chicago-based Black Muslim movement led by Elijah Muhammad to form his non-sectarian organization of Afro-American unity said it was the intention of his group in coalition with other Negro groups to elevate our freedom struggle above the domestic level of civil rights. Okay, not easy stuff guys, but I think it's really important for us to look at this last move that Malcolm X did because it was such a strong, um, It was such a strong move to make against the US, United States government to go above the United States government to bring it to the UN, where the United States' reputation in the world as a pillar of good intentions and um, to be a model for, for human rights, to be accused of mistreating its own citizen really would have put the pressure that Malcolm X was looking for in actually having things change. His argument being that the civil rights acts that had been passed, the promises that the US government had made previously were merely for show and not enforced. And therefore the US government couldn't be trusted to make these changes. They had to be held accountable by the United Nations. All right, guys, good work.